Hello, kindergarten friends. We are going to read a read aloud story together today, and it is called Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon. And it's kind of funny because we have a friend named Molly in our class, so I'm sure that she's excited to hear a story, and one of the characters shares her name. Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon. And this book was written by an author named Patty Lovell and illustrated by an illustrator named David Cattro. So if we look at the front cover of this book, we see this character. Who do you think that might be? I think probably Molly Lou Mellon. That, it might be her. And it says, stand tall. What does it mean when you stand tall? It could mean that you're trying to reach something and you're trying to be as tall as you can. I bet in Dance with Mrs. Serrano, Mrs. Serrano tells you to stand up tall before you do some dancing. Standing tall can also mean to sort of be proud of yourself and take pride in who you are and what you're doing and what you stand for. So we'll have to see what it means, this title, Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon. I think for today's read aloud, I'm gonna turn it this way so that you can see and that I can, and I can see too. All right, here we go. Stand tall, Molly Lou Mellon. So here on this very first page, we can see it looks like a bedroom and a window or a door. It must be breezy because I can see that the curtains are sort of blowing in the wind. I'll start reading. Molly Lou Mellon stood just taller than her dog and was the shortest girl in first grade. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, walk as proudly as you can and the world will look up to you. Oh, I noticed this. There's a ladder to get into her bed. That must be a way that the author and illustrator are showing us that Molly Lou Mellon is, it says the shortest girl in the first grade. And you're almost in first grade. So she did. Remember her grandma had said, walk as proudly as you can and the world will look up to you. So she did. Molly Lou Mellon had buck teeth that stuck out so far she could stack pennies on them. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, Smile big and the world will smile right alongside you. So she did. Molly Lou Mellon had a voice that sounded like a bullfrog being squeezed by a boa constrictor. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, sing out clear Sing out clear and strong, and the world will cry tears of joy. <laughs> Look at that frog's face. He's even like me. So she did. Oops. Molly Lou Mellon was often fumble-fingered. She didn't mind. Her grandma had told her, Believe in yourself and the world will believe in you too. So was a little, she was a little clumsy, but her grandma told her, believe in yourself and the world will believe in you too. So she did. Then Molly Lou Mellon moved to a new town. She had to say goodbye to her grandma and all of her friends. Here it looks like this is their car filled up with all of their belongings. And here's the for sale sign that says that they're moving. And here it looks like some of her sad friends. She had to start in a new school. And this looks like it's the school bus. Here's the school bus driver, and this is where you walk into the bus. Do you remember when we had to go on a school bus for our field trip? 
It's always exciting. Maybe a little, maybe she's a little nervous though too. On the first day of school, Ronald Durkin called her Shrimpo during PE class. When the game started, Molly Lou Mellon caught the football, ran under the legs of Ronald Durkin and scored a touchdown. All the children thought, wow, she's good. And Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. Was it kind of him to call her a shrimpo? No, that must have that must have hurt her feelings a little bit. But I'm glad that she believed in herself and she kept going and scored that touchdown. On the second day of school, Ronald Durkin, uh-oh, Ronald Durkin called her Bucky Tooth Beaver. <gasps> Molly Lou Mellon took out her pennies and stacked 10 high on her teeth and smiled as big as day. All the children smiled with glee and Ronald Durkin felt really foolish again. Wow, so even though Ronald made fun of her, Molly Lou Mellon decided to sort of turn it into something a little more positive. On the third day of school, Ronald Durkin said, you sound like a sick duck, honk, honk. Molly Lou Mellon sang out a quack, 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 so clear and strong that it made Ronald Durkin somersault backwards, hit his head and have to go to the nurse. All the children cried with joy to be free of Ronald Durkin for the rest of the afternoon. And Ronald Durkin felt foolish again. This boy Ronald, he's not very nice right now. On the fourth day of school, Ronald Durkin said that he'd made that she'd made the snowflake all wrong. But Molly Lou Mellon opened up her paper and revealed the most beautiful snowflake of all. All the children Ooh, and odd, even Ronald. Wow, look at how fancy that is. It sort of reminds me of lace. On the fifth day of school, Ronald Durkin brought Molly Lou Mellon a stacking penny for her tooth and he smiled at her. That night, Molly Lou Mellon took out a pencil and paper and wrote a letter to her grandma. Dear Grandma, I wanted to tell you that everything you told me was exactly right. Love, Molly Lou Mellon. What do you notice about Grandma? Look at Grandma's pretty small too. Look at how she is compared to her lamp and her chair and her cat. So how do you think Molly Lou, um, Molly Lou Mellon's grandma had such good advice? Yeah, I think it was because maybe she knew a little bit about being the smallest person in the class. Now I wanna go back to this page before we end our story. Oftentimes in a story, a character, that's the person or animal or thing that's in the story, Oftentimes they change. And in this story, Ronald made a pretty big change. In the beginning of the story, what was Ronald like? Well, in the, in the beginning of Molly's, at Molly's new school, what was Ronald like? Sort of mean, kind of grumpy, not very nice to her, not very nice to the other kids. It said that the other kids were happy when he had to go to the principal's office. We all know what that feels like sometimes. Sometimes there are friends in the class that, or in any class, not just ours, in any class that, you know, maybe aren't so nice sometimes or don't play as nicely as others or sometimes make mean jokes that don't really seem that funny. But Molly, she really tried and tried to be herself and to believe in herself and love herself. And then the other kids got to see how great she was. And then even Ronald started to see that maybe the way he was acting wasn't his best choice. And it really warmed my heart to see that this character made a change by the end of the story and that he realized that it wasn't very nice the way he was treating Molly and he wanted to change how he was treating her. Now in real life, what should Ronald probably have done? What do you, when you hurt someone's feelings or when you make a mistake, what should you do? 
I hope that you said apologize. I think, I like to think that maybe in the story on pages that we don't see, maybe Ronald did apologize to Molly and say, I'm really sorry for hurting your feelings or I'm sorry for making fun of you. That wasn't the right thing to do. Will you accept my apology? And I think maybe that's sort of what he was trying to do with giving her the penny, but it's important to say those words too, to say, I'm sorry I did that. I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. And then when you're ready, you can say, I accept your apology. And if you're not ready, you can always say, thank you for your apology, right? So I'm glad that things are starting to work out for Molly at her new school. And that is the story Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon. Now in the very beginning, I asked, what does it mean, do you think, when someone is standing tall? What do you think it means to stand tall? In this case, it wasn't just about someone trying to stand tall to reach something or stand tall before a dance performance. Molly's grandma was trying to teach her to stand tall and be proud of herself no matter what and to always believe in herself and love herself. And I think that we all need to remember that too. So whether you're the smallest kid in our class or the tallest kid, it doesn't matter. Whether you're the fastest kid or the slowest kid, no matter what, you should believe in yourself and love yourself. And I want you to know that I believe in all of you and I love you so, so, so much. All right, kindergarten, I will talk with you soon. Thank you for joining me today for this story, Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon. Bye-bye.